Oh, four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, with that in mind, there's a lot of questions. Uh, so, I'll tell you the background since, uh, again, many of you, uh, a lot of people have asked me questions and I try to be very forthcoming. Okay, how did it all start? Well, we should blame it on Greg Pilcock and Greg Pilcock and his charts, which were part of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, John Boniface, uh, and how many know John Boniface? Yeah, I do. John Boniface, well, he won a Genius Award years ago, uh, prior, to, prior to 04. One of those MacArthur, you know, you get like six and a, uh, and a half uh, thousand, uh, $650,000 or so, and uh, they proclaim you a genius, and you do whatever geniuses do. Uh, <laughs> But John had been the Green Party attorney in uh, 20, I mean in 2004, uh, for the recon, right? There was, there was not only a, in 2004, there was not only a election challenge uh, for which Cliff led, and I was part of that uh, litigation team, but there was also a recon. But in Ohio, uh, that was a 3% uh, random all uh, made famous because uh, J. Kenneth Blackwell, the Secretary of State, declared that uh, random did not mean random. And then, <laughs> anyway, anyway, the local Board of Election decided to pick uh, was okay, including if 3% equaled the number in one precinct, you could pick that because it was the exact number. Okay, so, uh, and he won in court. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff. Uh, we're about to run up to this election, uh, my involvement run up to uh, this election. Uh, Harvey and I have been writing uh, a tremendous uh, amount. Uh, Cliff and I were out in, uh, in the Bay Area uh, as well, predicting the debacle out there in the Sanders primary. But I did two things. I sued Edison Research Group, right? The uh, Monopoly exit pollsters. Yeah. I sued them. Uh, the suit's still ongoing. Uh, arguing they're acting as a state actor. They're colluding, right? If they're, if they're arguing that the um, actual total is always the correct total, no matter what their exit polls say, unadjusted, and they adjust to whatever the number is, no matter how mathematically implausible, I argue that they need to be considered uh, and again, you know, the numbers are uh, incredibly uh, implausible. And if you go to the Free Press site, uh, uh, there's a spreadsheet courtesy of Ron Bain in there. Uh, has anybody seen some of that, the spreadsheet uh, at the Free Press site? Well, anyway, so the other thing I do, which I thought was fairly easy, uh, I had done a request to get all the ballots in Ohio from uh, a variety of counties, and I started getting uh, about... Uh, back in late October, I started to get uh, uh, the responses, and uh, Fayette County caught my attention. It said there are, are no uh, ballot images and audit logs. Uh, and this came out in 2015, uh, when those of you who were in the marijuana legalization movement uh, recall three counties were caught flipping and this was blame on, quote, human error. And I was trying to figure out how, you know, are you, are people doing this and each precinct comes in? What do you mean it's human error? I understand you were doing kind of this. <laughs> <laughs> with, with electronic <laughs> devices. <laughs> for the electronic, or the precinct electronic devices. I didn't think you were like sitting around going like that, but. Uh, and they said, I said, fine, let me see the audit logs. And they said, the audit logs are turned off. <laughs> what do you think? You save money, let's save like 50 cents in electricity, I'm trying to figure out exactly how this makes sense. <laughs> so after uh, the Ohio uh, primary, I, you know, I began to send these out and I'm getting them back in. And, I'm, uh, and particularly 14 counties that have uh, uh, these DSA 50s, right? The uh, uh, central tabulators that are high speed scanners. Uh, and when they were writing back saying, we don't have any ballot images, 
I was trying to figure out how. So I was dealing with John Bracey out of Arizona, for out of Arizona, and he's, uh, uh, he finally got through to me. Uh, he sends me the stuff and saying, look, the default is these are protected. Your audit logs are on and your ballot units are on. But there's an option uh, where you can go in and say none. And essentially, that destroys. You don't record uh, those ballots as they're scanned through. You don't take those high-speed shots and fake the images. And they had another option that would want you to turn your audit logs off. So I figure, how is this possible? So uh, I, of course, sued um, through Judge Payne. <laughs> <laughs> went to court and uh, luckily Greg Pallas was there. I don't know if any of you uh, caught Greg Pallas's uh, report on that for Rolling Stone, but he talked himself into coming into the chamber. He's sitting around and so he was able to capture some of this. Uh, but I can't say the uh, counties that showed up, about five of them that demand I be sanctioned and I was one of the worst human beings to ever walk the earth, but I was impugning the integrity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they, uh, 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 they were making errors time. and they didn't want to make a record, record of it. What's the problem with that? So yeah, I mean, there's Claremont <laughs> County, which was notorious from uh, having bad numbers in the 2004 election. Uh, they sent up their uh, prosecutor, one of the county prosecutors, who's demanding I be sanctioned and oh. I'm impugning the integrity. And then Mahoning County, I mean, at that point, I, I drew the line, even though it's an anti You know, uh, your, your county's mobbed up. <laughs> when we asked for your ballots in 04, you told me waste management, which has an interesting provenance, often linked to organized crime. Uh, accidentally recycled the ballot, how they got into the ballot vault with two keys. <laughs> at that point, they cut me off. Uh, but their whole argument is that I was impugning the integrity. Uh, and I was saying, no, that's already done. What I'm trying to do, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is establish the integrity by turning on your, your safety features, your audit logs, and your ballot images. But anyway, uh, I lost that. Uh, okay. So going, uh, going up uh, into this election, uh, John Boniface, uh, a week before uh, Thanksgiving week, uh, on a Monday, uh, we get a call, uh, or I get a call from, uh, uh, from Bill Stein saying, can you be on a call with uh, John Boniface and uh, David Cobb? Um, and he makes a pitch. He's representing something like 56 uh, well-known computer security people, including Alex Holderman at the University of Michigan, who had hacked uh, the Washington, D.C. Uh, system and played the Michigan uh, fight song. So that would make Harvey happy since he graduated from Michigan. So uh, these guys are looking at the numbers and uh, uh, there's a variety of things uh, that are going on uh, in, in the numbers. Uh, although they don't like traditional kind of social science bell-shaped curve things, uh, uh, they were some of them, uh, there was a variety of analysis a couple guys were working on uh, including Damon, that there was not a non-random distribution in the precincts of numbers, right? There was a whole lot of zeros and fives, right? And zeros and ones, uh, which was thought by some to be a sign that this precinct's been safely hacked, let's move on, right? So they were actually, uh, 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 a professor, uh, not in the Holden of the University of Michigan, was looking in great detail and saying, why aren't these numbers um, yeah, Mebane was uh, was looking at that, uh, and why aren't these numbers, you know, more random? So uh, there was a lot of that stuff floating around. But then uh, Boniface makes his pitch, and then uh, one of the assignments uh, I got, Harvey and I were looking at the numbers. So Ron Bayman was working on stuff, and uh, Red Cocup was working on uh, some graphs, uh, confidence intervals for you. So we put it all together published it, and gave it to Jill and David. Uh, but we didn't hear anything from uh, Boniface uh, for a week to the next Monday, right? And that's Thanksgiving week. So 
Uh, and meanwhile, we read in the newspaper he was hanging out trying to talk Hillary Clinton uh, into challenging the vote by right? all, all of these computer security experts. So uh, he comes back to us a week later, uh, and David and uh, Jill have looked at it, and they're excited, and they go, yeah, this looks like something we uh, should look into. Uh, we wrote a whole analysis saying, look, the, if you look at the AID uh, standards, the Agency on International Development, uh, we would not certify these. Well, well, exit polls are not conclusive proof of a hacking. They are red flags. It tells you sort of where to look. Uh, and we would investigate these things. Who got the analysis? What? Who got the analysis? Uh, well, there's a variety of us. Uh, Greg John worked Simon. a little on it. Jonathan Simon got the unadjusted no, exit polls. Which was all done, who would you give it to? Uh, Jill Stein oh. and uh, uh, David Cobber, campaign manager. So again, Jill's a medical doctor and uh, uh, you know knows basic uh, uh, math. So uh, <laughs> particularly, you know, Greg was working on really nice charts, little red lines. <laughs> no, no news agencies wanted to see it. Uh, a new, news agencies tend, uh, particularly mainstream for-profit agencies, to not call the American political system. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like in their integrity type things. No, oh, no, they just don't do that. There's a Rubicon you don't cross in the mainstream media, and that is you don't suggest yeah. that we're, someone can we're, hack we're, the most hackable system. We're in the an world. exceptional country, and we don't have fraud here. Yeah, right. okay. so hey. no, that's not the only Rubicon that they want to cross. Other other parts of the world. No, e even though Never. if you read if you read political science literature, uh, elections. Are Hacked at every level of American society and most other societies, from sixth grade class president to homecoming <laughs> queen. If shockingly, if you design a system that can be easily stuffed and manipulated, so I wasn't people stuff it, and, 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 and you know, can stuff the system, right? They rig the system, and that is, you know, why you have to create uh, uh, well, ways to there, secure it. The, the Republicans constantly make a, a you know, a false allegation of voter fraud, and the mainstream media covers it. When uh, sure, and, and we and, cover and, it, yeah, in academics yeah. too. Uh, uh, and Minetti, uh, among others, uh, at Bernard. I mean, and uh, the stuff is. I mean, that's kind of left over from the, uh, you know, the Tammany Hall and mm -hmm. uh, Daily Chicago, where Sam Giancana owned works. So there was a period of time. I mean. Uh, historically, uh, that uh, you know, that people stuff ballots in, uh, in America, and uh, you know, landslide Linden. You know the famous quote that dead man has the same right to vote as any other. <laughs> dead man. Uh, so, but a lot of that, uh, what they're suggesting though, in, in the Trumpian world, is that uh, somehow immigrants that are illegal are showing up at the polls. Most of the studies indicate that. Mm -hmm. People that are here illegal, the last place they go uh, is a public <laughs> official uh, of any type. That's right. Uh, right. But, but the mainstream media allows them to make that allegation, mm -hmm. but they will not allow you, Harvey, or. Because he has back. Exactly. It's that's also it. who it disparages. So right. if you're saying there's sure. voter fraud, that disparages voters. That doesn't disparage. Yes. That, doesn't, uh, that doesn't call the uh, system. I mean, and again, uh, facts matter little, right? If I, I've told you before, the last major study, and this study comes around every year or so, out of the 47 long term democracy, we were 47th out of 47. You know, uh, not being very democratic for a variety of reasons. Now, that's Harvard and the University of Australia at, at Sydney. So, uh, again, Jimmy Carter had. Uh, if you call up the Carter Center, and we quoted this in articles, and say, why don't you observe American uh, senators, and you, you, you get, the, you know, Carter the third there, you get the grandson, he'll say, because America does not meet minimal standards of democracy. <laughs> My Carter Center doesn't observe American uh, because we don't meet the minimal standards. And uh, Der Spiegel, uh, Jimmy Carter told Der Spiegel that America is, quote, a dysfunctional democracy. 
I don't want to get too far off the subject that Juanita was asking, but could you talk a little bit about why we're not finding what we're looking for in the oh, well, three counts? Oh, no, well, yeah. there's a I lot mean, of reasons for that, I know. Well, <laughs> I was going, can I count the ways? Right, no, it, it's sort of 49% uh, of Wisconsin uh, is not being handled. Uh, particularly the areas that were thought to have the most interesting vote count. Uh, at least 70%, if not 80%, it depends on who's counting it. Uh, how do you recount DREs in Pennsylvania that don't have paper, don't have a, a VPAT, right? There's no voter verified paper audit trail. So it's really difficult. I mean, what they do is they push a machine, a button, and the numbers come out, and lo and behold, they were the same numbers. But there's no look, you don't get, we argue that we should look at the ballot definition we should look at the software, we should look at the audit logs, you know, we should treat the machine as if it were a uh, slot machine in Vegas, right? We should pull it apart, <laughs> I mean, which has really high standards, right? I mean, if someone thinks the machine's cheating uh, in Vegas, there's squads that go into action, right? I mean, we, uh, I don't think any country is more devoted to the uh, and the preservation of high probability fair gambling. Well, you know, I mean, because our courts have ruled that, uh, you know, if you've got some prime time uh, plus one, I mean, you had Ben Harris going into this, pointing out that GEMS, the General Election Management System, created by Diebold, uh, who came under heavy fire here for questionable practices, glitching voters, uh, machines that didn't work, etc., and went out of business because of, quote, a pattern of worldwide fraud, uh, which then became Premier, which was bought by ESNS, and some of it was spun off into Dominion, uh, which was operating in, in Wisconsin. Uh, the reality is what we also requested is why don't we use the open source system, track and burn, right? Is that here's your scanners, right? Why don't we do what they do in Humboldt County? Right? You run them through your machines, and then you run them through the open source machine, mm -hmm. uh, which is non proprietary. Is that Trackenberg a brand name? Trackenberg, yeah, is the guy who created it. It's, uh, it's used in Humboldt County. Lori Grace put money into it, but it's, it's an open source system. So, uh, yeah, I mean, most computer people tell me it's not real hard. Uh, to come up with a uh, a system to count votes, particularly since you don't have to subtract unless it's Volusia County. Uh, and, and it's 2000 and you need a call on Fox News, like you might suck 16,000 votes out of the computer, uh, you know, uh, for Gore and add 4,000 to Bush. So uh, his, his John Ellis, his first cousin, can scream, you know, Jebby said, you know, uh, uh, Bush one, you know, Chevy said uh, W, you know, George won, etc. So, go ahead. Quick question about um, a lot of electronic systems, like the iVotronic in Franklin mm -hmm. County, they have several different flash cards mm -hmm. storing the same data. So there is some cross-checking that's possible in some electronic systems. Is that available to you in Pennsylvania? Uh, uh, no. Pennsylvania. <laughs> The judge ruled that we didn't uh, need uh, to see uh, the inside of the machines. Uh, the safest system to, to count would have been Michigan because it's a universal system which is using ballots to be scanned. The problem, of course, uh, uh, it's in the book. I got a call uh, from Jill saying, uh, again, you know, there's 70. 75 to 78,000 undervotes, which is higher than it's ever been in the state. It was close to double the record. And most of them, about 28,000 were in the Detroit area, Wayne, uh, Wayne and Oakland County. But many of them were in black areas where apparently the black population came out, didn't vote for Hillary for president, 
and then voted the rest of the ticket uh, on the way down. Now, really? Uh, is it's well established? Well, that's what they claim. Wow. They didn't vote no, no, they just they didn't vote anyone for president. Right. And, and, and these are undervoted. Yep, undervoted. You know, but if you know, you've been reading about Michigan law, if there's any discrepancy between the poll and the number of ballots, you know, one more person signed in, uh, or there's uh, one more ballot than people there, they don't have to count them. It's considered corruption. Also, if the seals are broke, the safety seals, and tragically in Detroit, 59% of all the precincts, the seals were accidentally broke. Wow. So, yeah, it was a tragedy of epic proportion. Uh, so, uh, source code in escrow. Uh, it's the only state and signed a non-disclosure agreement. So as it was going along, uh, there were a group of people, John Brakey and other on the uh, ground, and our old friend Pete Carney was up there volunteering. Uh, but, you know, Pete was, you know, obsessed with uh, the election stuff, as was Brakey with the uh, uh, ballot images. So the, uh, they each wanted the Green Party using Jill as a plaintiff. Uh, break he was using with the Chris Souter, uh, an attorney, uh, who had Lee Fisher's recount back in the 90s, uh, is both of them wanted to file. Uh, and uh, I did get permission for both of them to file, right? Because uh, it, it should be done this weekend. So it's going south, where half of them, we don't get to look at the hand counts, we don't get to look at the machines, so why not uh, take a chance and look at the source code? Uh, but when I did that, the New York uh, lawyers screamed that we were wrecking everything. I was trying to figure out exactly what we were wrecking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they're very highly paid, and they said they could litigate it after the recount was over. Yeah. Now, I argued that, you know, it might be moot at that point. Uh, the judge said, well, maybe we'll look at some of this stuff. But uh, they were obsessed because, uh, you know, I had authorized that we would take an extra, you know, let's extend it uh, a week, right, uh, and actually look to see if there's a back door uh, in the source code. So originally authorized and then was not authorized. Uh, and, and there was a huge, huge fight. So uh, I think Brakey uh, is still in the game with his attorney uh, trying to get the NAACP or someone to be uh, a plaintiff and, and file on the ballot images. So uh, yeah, there was a brief moment, uh, uh, again, 
the litigation team, which are fine litigators, know absolutely nothing about election integrity and how ballots are counted and how the machinery is. Uh, but the interesting thing is they don't seem to realize how ignorant they are uh, on actual recounts. And, of course, none of them had experience because we only had 2000 and 2004. There's not a whole lot of presidential recount experience. A lot of it's in this room from people who uh, have actually done it. Uh, but I feel pretty good, you know. By the end, they went from treating me as a brain damaged 12 year old from the Midwest, <laughs> to I think by the end I was like a 14 year old and I was slightly <laughs> impaired. Uh, Get the car keys. <laughs> um, what, what's the story on Jill not getting, on um, not being sufficiently aggrieved in at least huh. one state? Michigan. Yeah, Michigan, yeah, yeah, Michigan I argued that. That is, uh, they used that standard in uh, 2004 during the recount in Ohio. Uh, that's why they only got a 3%. And if the count was off, then you could count. <laughs> well, there's one named Hillary Clinton, right. but yeah. she didn't uh, right. perceive that uh, yeah, Harvey uh, and I, uh, but primarily Harvey wrote articles. And, you know, if you can't eat, look, you had... Gore, you had Kerry, you had Hillary Clinton. You lose, and no matter how funny the numbers are, 12 states were flagged, uh, one for uh, 13 overall, one for Hillary. You know, that you might have looked at if you were the uh, AID uh, uh, in the United States, and you'd go and at least look around. Uh, but um, uh, none of that uh, was done. So, Why is that? Why is that? that, that these presidential well, presidents I, I, I think there's an agreement. Uh, there's a gentle person's agreement yeah. that the winners won and you shouldn't be a sore loser. Right. Okay, fine. We got lots of citizens in this country who are losing out in the worst way. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have plenty to agree. Let's get at it. That's yeah. the, that's, can we find a legally acceptable, aggrieved party or you can, but could use Hillary's money, and she won't <laughs> give it up. And so, if you're Joe Stein, you're getting beat up on the internet every day because you're the one doing this to overturn the election on behalf of Hillary. But she's obviously not doing that. And Hillary doesn't is right. and, and, and in any way, think, shape, think or form. Think about what, what happened. Not? Yeah, think about what happened money-wise. Right? Money, yeah. Is that money. again on on Monday night? Uh, you know. I was in Florida, supposedly on vacation. Uh, didn't get out of there much. Got to walk maybe once a day on the beach because all this stuff is happening. By Tuesday, uh, we decide we're going to go forward. On Wednesday, in the afternoon, we put up, you know, we need $2 million within two days. And Thanksgiving is in between, right? And all this money pours in. And of course, it's like, well, Jill's getting rich off uh, this money. Reality is, it wasn't the reporting uh, done by Alice, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who I called up, uh, as well as Steve uh, Rosenfeld, who uh, Harvey and I wrote a, uh, wrote a book with, you know, we're able to point out these are heavily segregated SEC funds, right? You, you don't put money in your pocket because no. it's a recount, right? Yeah. You have to have a totally separate account and account for all the money uh, that yeah. comes in. Although the, you know, the talking point for the Republicans is Hillary was just doing this. Uh, I mean, uh, Jill was just doing it to get rich. Hillary was already rich. So. Uh, in that scenario. So the money was raised, but the issue was, uh, you know, it would cost, uh, the last recount in Wisconsin was half a million dollars. So the assumption, they said early on, well, there's twice as many ballots or so. It's more ballots as presidential. So they said one to 1.1 million. When we showed up, they asked for 3.5 million and told us they have to go up to 3.9. Uh, so they're estimating. And now let's be fair. We don't, we don't want to disparage Wisconsin because under Scott Walker, you know, 500 to 3, wages for civil service have gone up seven times, haven't they? It's that kind of progressive government in a five-year period. The wages went up seven times, so that would justify that 
$1.5 million figure because we were paying the salaries of every civil servant working on the recount. So now you've got you know, a million dollars of cost in Wisconsin to high-priced attorneys, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and again, you've got uh, money paid into Michigan, you know, 800 to, to 1 million, and they're mad because they think they should more, they have more people than Wisconsin. Uh, but they're paying less money. And then Pennsylvania. Uh, but again, only 49% were hand counted in Wisconsin. I'm wondering how much does it cost to you know, run the machines uh, through and push a button, right? That seems to be a machine test, not a recount. In a recount, you should be able to actually look at the ballot to see if uh, it's marked. So in the, in the process, what was going on, uh, Jill called me regularly. I did a lot of her press briefings. But she would ask me stuff and say, uh, uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, Hillary's running on this flat rate ahead of the rest of the ticket, and then in Southwest, she drops precipitously. Have you ever heard of that? Go, the <laughs> yeah. Conley anomaly. And those of you who know this story, uh, Jesse Jackson himself tried to teach me how to rhyme uh, when I said that. The calmly anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> never got it down, never said it right, and it felt somewhat foolish. It's kind of like Saturday Night Live. But yeah, C. Ellen Conley, as Cliff knows, right? Virtually no money, uh, not really running. She's up in Cleveland, you know, there's this uh, benchmark established on a drop off of the ticket, and suddenly she gets to Southwest Ohio where three counties provided more than the margin of victory, and suddenly Kerry takes a nosedive, and C. Ellen goes right along, right? So, uh, and again, some of it was plausible. Maybe Kerry got less votes uh, in the general than in the uncontested primary. Uh, so, uh, I mean, some of the numbers were fairly absurd, right? So they saw that, right? The Conley anomaly shows up. You also saw, right, Richard uh, Hayes Phillips early on was able to point out what he saw earlier. You had 80 counties with more than a 90% turnout, including five that were over 100%. <laughs> so uh, that, was, that was interesting. Yeah. While we were there, 110% of the count. While we were there, just them cleaning up. Just them cleaning up their numbers went from third, uh, 30,000 uh, loss for Hillary to 23, because many of these admitted, as did Clyde, Ohio, in 2004 when they had 131% voter turnout, that they had accidentally, <laughs> they had accidentally ran the ballots through twice. Thus, if Trump wins a thousand through twice, you know the math, two thousand, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why they had more than a hundred percent. So the broader question, uh, you know, it was only a uh, ten thousand seven hundred difference. Uh, also, Trump in Pennsylvania, even though the recount doesn't look like it will ever take place there, just cleaning up, you know, uh, once we were heading in and they were cleaning up. Uh, Trump went from 77,000 vote margin to 43,000. Uh, uh, he lost about 24,000 votes just because like, people were going to visit and look at the books, and uh, they found all these errors. But it's not that different than Ohio, where uh, Bush on election uh, uh, night has, wins by almost 139,000 votes, and it ends up being a little over 118,000. And that was just cleaning up in the 3% uh, recount. Remember, the only county uh, that had counted every ballot because they didn't want to go to jail, they had accidentally pre-counted the 3%. So to avoid going to jail, they called their county prosecutors and said, cool, you know, uh, do it all. Uh, but there was a pickup of 6.5% for carry when you actually hand count. I'm sure it was a legitimate mistake, but <laughs> so, so shockingly, uh, when you hand count, this is, you know, Hillary's picking up more than 3%, although, you know, it's all over in Michigan, but the Trump forces filed suit after suit, as did two super PACs uh, in Wisconsin, 
as did the Attorney General of, uh, mm. of Michigan, but a tremendous battle by, by the Trump forces, the super PACs, and the Republicans to put up uh, every obstacle mm -hmm. to the recount. So with, uh, with that in mind... Uh, I thought Trump was very concerned about this being stolen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, yeah. what he happened was, there? Uh, Wait, uh, he lost. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, clearly, he was trying to, uh, you know, uh, we, we argued is, you know, why don't you just let us recount? Uh, yeah, let me, uh, uh, I'm going to let Harvey say a few things, and if Cliff wants to say a few, and then we can take questions. Go ahead, Harvey. Okay, so um, thank you, Bob. It's great. Uh, it's great to with uh, uh, Jill to do this, and um, I want to um, thank Bob and Suzanne for this wonderful evening again. It's a beautiful time here. Yay. <clears throat> As Kurt Vonnegut used to say in a gathering, I just, isn't this nice? It's great uh. to see everybody here. So as the historian of the team here, um, uh, I, I put out a piece tonight that's going to go, it's a free press now, and it's going to go to Reader Supported News in the morning. Uh, there is a, a tiny glimmer that Donald Trump might not become president. What? And we would, and we would have the central intelligence agency to fight for this. And we have no idea what's going on in the backstory here. But suddenly, out of the blue, the central intelligence agency... Could you... Uh, hey, yo, yo. Thanks. Uh, the central intelligence agency has confirmed that the Russians did hack this election on behalf of Donald Trump. And they have been linked to the Russians between now and December 19th, which is when the Electoral College meets. Forget about it. Now, we haven't had an instance in American history where a presidential candidate did commit treason, fucking treason, before the election. Anybody want to tell me? What year? 1968. In, in 1968, uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson was negotiating between the North and the South Vietnamese for a ceasefire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that uh, there would be a ceasefire and Hubert Humphrey, who had come from nowhere, was about would have won the election. Richard Nixon and the FBI wiretapped this. And they told Lyndon Johnson about it. Richard Nixon's aide and um, uh, what the hell was her name? Chenault, who was the, the daughter of the guy who started the fire tires, called the South Vietnamese, which is ill fucking legal and told them to not make peace. Because if they didn't make peace, uh, Nixon would win and give them a better deal. That is treason. Mm -hmm. And it had, it had Johnson come out with that publicly oh, sure. prior to the election. Hey, can you guys be quiet? Hello? Hey. Yo, yo. Uh, had Johnson come out with that publicly, Nixon would have never won the election in 1968. Right. Something might be going on. So I circulate a petition to move on asking that the Electoral College not vote until there's a full investigation of any possible Trump involvement with the Russian hacking of, the, of this past election, which has now been mean? established by the Central Intelligence Agency. And, and what would that mean if they found that to be the case? It would mean that Donald Trump is guilty of treason. Would that mean Pence? Well, uh, that Pence, well that, it, would be, it would be an interesting moment in the history of the Electoral College. It could go to Congress. The Electoral College has to Congress, meet on December yeah. 19th. That is the constitutional setup as, the 12, as per the 12th Amendment. So yeah, this is one of those slim glimmers of hope, but legally it's real. If it comes, I, and I have no idea why the Central Intelligence Agency would come forward at this point in time as did Comey against Hillary just prior to the election. Uh, so uh, I'm very intrigued by this. Uh, there is a, it is very interesting. And they have been very explicit in, in saying that there is absolutely no, not only that the, that, that the Russians do this, but that there is absolutely no doubt they did on behalf of Donald Trump. They have said that yeah. very clearly. And, and they, it puts them essentially in, uh, in line with the 56 or so uh, computer security experts. That's right. So this, we are now in the throes of the sixth election in American history. It's more than 15% of our presidents have been um, uh, lost the public vote and now are poised to win in the electoral college. 
1800, which is controversial, but I stick with it. 1800, Jefferson was elected because of the three-fifths bonus. In other words, Jefferson was elected by a lot of slaves who couldn't vote. And had not been for the three-fifths bonus, he would not have won that election. Some of those who, 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 whose votes were counted but didn't vote were actually his children, but we won't go into that tonight. <laughs> um, 1824, 1876... <laughs> 1888, and, um, uh, and, um, and of course, 2000. We have had a popular vote, um, vote for, the, for the person who lost the election. Now, in this particular case, one of the intriguing things to me also is that Hillary Clinton has been absolutely silent. Yeah. There has, it is as if she has dropped off the face of the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Even Al Gore in 2000 went to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. She has said absolutely nothing. But Obama's, and we have, and, and Obama, Obama's of course, directed this investigation into the Russians, though. Well, Obama, I, who knows what's going on there? The CIA may have forced this. I think that oh. there, there may be a lot of people okay. in the government who know that when Donald Trump comes in, everybody's going to lose their job. Mm -hmm. well, he is yeah, going to say, you're fired exactly like to the entire the federal government. Yeah. He's going to yeah, put yeah, all his people in there. He circulated a yeah. petition, a, a, um, a questionnaire in the EPA, yeah. Environmental yeah. Protection yeah. Agency. Right. Are you, do you now or have you ever believed in global warming? And that's basically what it is. You know, it's a seven, 77 uh, question, questionnaire. Uh, everybody at the FBI, everybody at state, everybody at the, probably at the CIA is going to go. And one thing John Kennedy learned the hard way, you don't fuck with the CIA, right? Um, ask Alan Dulles. Who pulled the trigger? But all, yeah, all members of the Hitler Youth Corps made yes. death. And right. had to the Mussolini. So we are 100 percent certain also to think the body work in the, in the work of this election, that Hillary Clinton was the rightful winner of this election, not only with the public vote, she has won by the highest public vote of any uh, a presidential candidate who lost. By 2.7 million votes. It's more than 20 times the margin that John Kennedy had in 1960. It's more than five times the margin that Al Gore had in 2000, and four times the margin that Nixon had in 1968, if you consider those legitimate elections. Yeah? Is there an electoral college in other nation that's practicing? No. no. And it's the, this is the only college where George Bush actually got an A. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think has anything to do with the fact that everyone was predicting Hillary to win? I mean, everyone. Well, was she did win. That's the point. Well, that's what I'm saying. The and predictions would be totally well, off. You know, the, but the predictions were different. right. The yeah. polls were all right. And the bottom line that's is that we, the, the electoral college is being decided by five states, where in five states where Hillary won in the exit polls, but lost in the alleged popular vote, and that would be Florida, South America, North yeah. Carolina. Uh, Pennsylvania, yeah. Michigan, and Wisconsin. In all five states, Hillary Clinton won the exit polls, which means she won the popular vote, but officially it was deprived of her. And the, the Democrats, as Bob knows, have put not one cent into these recounts and then let the deadlines go by for Florida and North Carolina. If, those, if the, all those five states had gone to Clinton in terms of the Electoral College, which they should have, she would be winning an audience line. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a situation where the presumptive winner in the electoral college is claiming three million people swam across the Rio Grande, showed up to swim, to vote right. dripping wet, and then swam back yeah. across the river, right? And yet they have fought Bob and Jill and everybody else tooth and nail in the, uh, in the, uh, the three recount states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. It's absolutely insane, totally corrupt, and of course we're seeing the recounts have been showing what Bob and I have been reporting since 2004, which is rigged machines, you know, stripped precincts, uh, lost ballots, um, uh, disenfranchisement, you know, selective racial disenfranchisement. It's all there. Yeah, and if, so, you know. Yeah, just briefly with, uh, we got a call from uh, Jill saying, is there any of these undervotes that make any sense? Has this happened before? 2006, in Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, 94,442 undervotes, 16.8%. And Barbara Sykes, black state auditor, was predicted to win by 10 points. 
and Mary Taylor squeaked it out uh, with less than 1% of the votes. Wow. So everything you're now seeing, Squire versus Sanders, Carol Squire, 33.81% uh, undervote. Uh, Gear, uh, this white uh, uh, judge was not expected to win against this black incumbent judge in domestic court. Uh, again, he wins very closely after 33.8% of the votes don't show up. In her last race, and in the other judge races, it was about 11%. So, um, well, so and in Michigan this year, there were 74,000, right? 75,000 75, ballots. You'll love this. <laughs> where the Michigan voters came to the polls, you know, stood in line, got their ballots, voted for the entire ticket, but left blank the presidential preference where they had four choices. 74,000 voters in a state that was allegedly decided by 11,000. My favorite. My favorite moment was in the, in, in the Boliviation uh, uh, pageant was Michael Moore on national television saying with a straight face that Barack Obama had angered people so much by drinking the water in Flint that 74,000 people refused to cast a ballot for the president. I mean, how stupid can you get? I mean, it's unbelievable. So this, and we have seen all this. He was first and then you, okay? You, 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 he's waiting. So, um, just kind of a couple things. Um, when, when we talk about all the reasons why uh, Clinton lost when it comes to you know, Russia and WikiLeaks or Comey or, you know, um, just whatever, what have you, are we kind of avoiding as progressives an opportunity to really uh, force a, a real conversation on the Democrats to say, okay, look, the real reason why you lost is she's betrayed every value that. Uh, the Democrats are actually supposed to stand for. Well, that's another issue. You know, yes, well, they're, they're absolutely that's true. A whole other issue. We're missing an opportunity. Well, we're not because the, the first the first reality is that we don't have a system of elections that has any basis in reality. And, and the bottom line is, she didn't lose the election. She won the election. And no matter how many more people had come out and vote as well as right or whatever and voted for her, she still would have lost. You have people yelling at Ralph Nader for the last 16 years without coping with the fact if Ralph Nader had never run in Florida, if everybody who had voted for Ralph Nader had voted for Al Gore, he still would have lost Isn't because his brother was the, the was the governor. Isn't so, that the same thing as a Nader excuse? They put it all on Nader but not take accountability for their own. No, because the first thing we have to do is have an electoral system where right. votes actually count. Okay. That, that's the first thing we have to do. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. Okay. I, I, yeah. That will come later. It's starting to come already. David Brock yesterday blamed Hillary's loss on the millennials. I mean, what a moron. Yeah. Come on. Please. All right, let's say that uh, Trump is uh, treason. Who takes the presidency then? That's what I Does it go down to Pence? The, what, what happens? There will be, there's no precedent. There's absolutely no precedent. For but the, the electors of Trump, it would be assumed, and Pence would be the one. That's the would be the ones that show up. It would probably. But they can vote for whoever they want. I mean, there's fine states. Yes, you know. I would not be surprised if between now and December 19th, if if Donald Trump is basically shown to be a traitor, I would not be surprised if John Kasich comes for that. Because absolutely, well, the guy in Texas. There was an op-ed in the New York Times. The guy in Texas, they, they are not legally bound to vote for the guy that they are elected for. This, this guy an op -ed, says, I'm, I, I'm a, a Republican elector. Technically, he's Why supposed to they? vote for Trump. He says, I can't stand Trump. I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote for somebody who's sane and moderate, John Kasich. <laughs> so, you know, I give you president Okay, they can choose. It's possible. Yeah, they're not constitutionally bound. And in fact, a lawyer has come forward, a lawyer has come forward specifically to counsel electors who don't want to vote for Trump. Whoa. Wow. I want to make a point here that uh, I've always been, uh, you know, not that enthusiastic supporter of the Green or Jill Stein, but like we lost the recount in the Supreme Court in Michigan, and what Jill's doing is she's 
have a rally in Detroit on Monday morning. Good for I think that tells you everything you need to know about that person's commitment. I know Bob and the Green Party people who have had a lot of in the Green Party going, why are you doing this recount on behalf of Hillary? But this is really genuine stuff. Like, okay, we don't trust the vote counts. And even though the Supreme Court ruled against this, I don't care I'm going there anyway. Good I think her. that's a really important moment in time. Good for her, absolutely. Yeah. And Bob, maybe you should explain, the, some people have been yelling at her for picking these three states. Can you explain the strategy of those three yeah, states? Yeah, the, um, the states were based, as Greg knows, on the red flags, right? Is that which ones were the most improbable? The difference between the unadjusted exit polls and the vote uh, total. Here's the reality. The reality is that Utah, there were more missing votes than Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. But if you gave all those votes back to Hillary Clinton, it didn't change the elect, uh, electorate. Right? So part of it, uh, in Ohio, Ohio had worse numbers than those three states, too. Uh, but the unadjusted exit polls showed Trump winning by one-tenth of one percent. Right. So part of it was we were looking for where are red flags and where did it actually flip, you know, made a difference. In New York, uh, oddly, uh, I mean, there was some strange stuff. 24 out of 28 states, there was a shift towards Trump. Uh, 12 of them should have been flagged for examination. But the fact that 24 out of 28 would shift for one person and, and only really, you know, uh, three would shift for Hillary and one would be a toss-up. Uh, and there was really only one significant. In New York, uh, Hillary had an unexplained 6.2% of the vote, but Dominion counts in New York, a lot of New York, and they also contributed uh, to, to the Clinton Foundation, as did Hig, which owns Hard Inner Civic. So I, I don't know how these foundations exist that are taking the money from candidates uh, that are running uh, for president. So we picked it, the difference, you know, uh, well outside the margin of error, and it changed the election. That was standard. And I've repeatedly told, like, well, what about Nevada? That's close. And it's like, yes, but the exit poll showed Clinton winning there, that there wasn't an unexplained shift. Well, you know, uh, what, what about New Hampshire? Well, the exit poll showed Clinton winning there, you know, just like with me. What about Ohio? It showed Trump winning by one-tenth of one percent. The dispatch said he lose by one percent. I mean, clearly we could have looked here. Ohio has some of, the, as usual, some of the worst numbers of any state. And the other thing that's even more tragic is Harvey will tell you, three of the states, uh, you know, looks at, uh, we should have gone in and looked at Four. senators in <coughs> Missouri, uh, and in Wisconsin with fine gold, and in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. All three of those met the criteria uh, where had the vote been in line with the margin of error uh, of the exit polls, we had two more Democratic senators. And that, that carries back to 2014, because in 2014, the Republicans also lost in the exit polls in three other Senate races in North Carolina, Alaska, and Colorado. So if you assume that those six Senate seats were stolen, which we think they were, by the Republicans from the Democrats, you have a six vote in the U.S. Senate, which will determine the Supreme Court. And that, no, the Democrats have not said a word about this, and I want to really quickly get back to your point. Cliff wanted to say Oh, yeah, but let me say one more thing real quick, because uh, the, the, the question of uh, aggressives and, and Hillary and the whole politics of that, what we're fighting for is the integrity of an electoral system. If we had as an electoral system with integrity, Bernie would have been the Democratic yeah. nominee. Yeah. 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 And, and so, you know, when you fight for democracy, you know, if she had half a brain, she would have run Bernie. And then the party of the Obama guy would turn out to bring Hillary and Bernie. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and that was the obvious outcome. Of course, Sarah Silverman had to tell us we're all ridiculous. Right. And, and, uh, and that's what they thought of the people. And I, 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 who went to the Democratic Convention? Anybody here? You know, I, I was at a, a panel with Bernie delegates from the Democratic Convention. It sounded a lot to me like Chicago 
in 68. I mean, people were very badly treated. So, but the bottom line is, oh, besides yeah, terrible, terrible mm -hmm. the bottom line is, aside from all the other stuff, if we had an actual democratic system where the vote actually counts, if we had, and this is what Bob and I have been advocating for, and I'll finish, uh, 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 hand counted paper ballots, universal automatic voter registration, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, a four day holiday for, day for holiday. voting, <laughs> right? Automatic recounts, which we've added to the list now, right? Uh, and so so that everybody can vote, you have you, you got a lot of paper ballot, you balance candidate, you're the registers, the registration rolls are transparent. Plus abolition of the electoral college, yeah. abolition of gerrymandering, and the ban yes. of corporate money yes. in, in politics. That's, that's what we need. That's a seven or eight point plan so that we have an actual that's democracy. That's and that's what we're about here. So uh, Will thank you. Will you repeat your your uh, petition on change.org or move on? Yeah.